Merry Christmas. How is everyone doing today? Better than I deserve. Amen for that. You ask the question when you see someone, you say, uh, Are you ready for Christmas? What's the response you should get? Not yet. I'm not done shopping. I have a gift to get for so on and so on. And we always correlate Christmas with shopping or getting gifts. And uh, very rarely do you hear someone saying, I've been meditating on the, uh, the birth of Christ. Very rarely we hear someone saying, you know, uh, this year I've been uh, pondering my walk with the Lord. We don't hear those things, but really that's what Christmas is about. Uh, the title of the message is Prepare Ye the Way for the Lord. Uh, Christ to be born. Where? Not only uh, here on the earth, but in us. You see? And if you're a born again believer, Christ does rule and reign in your life. But sometimes he takes second place. Sometimes we're like the innkeeper and say, Lord, there's no room for you in this in particular part of my life. We, the Bible says, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. I mean, sometimes we just give Jesus a spare bedroom or a part of our life, not all of it. And who really benefits, not us, when we don't give them all? Christmas can be a wonderful time of the year, but also it's a sad time of the year for, for folks that uh, have lost loved ones. They uh, come to that first meal as Pat was singing and um, I was praying and uh, about the, the table set and that one loved individual wouldn't be there this year. You know, you think about Christmas past and how you come together with family and what that means and how you join together and uh, how joyous those times are. Uh, but for Christians, uh, we have the one up. We know that if we don't see our loved ones this Christmas, we may see him or her the following Christmas or Christmas to come. What a blessing that is, amen. See, as believers, we know long we have sorrow as the world has sorrow. We have hope, the blessed hope, the glory to God. We serve a God who was and is and is to come. Hallelujah. And that's the joy we have. So the title of the message of preparing for Christmas uh, isn't every day. Every day we prepare for Christ and make room for Him. And I took the text from Isaiah chapter 40 and verses 1 through 9. I'm going to have Joey come up and read that for us in a moment. And just a little bit of the context of chapter 40 of Isaiah. Isaiah, an Old Testament prophet. He spoke in many places of Christ to come. And this in particular context, he's talking to Israel about their exile that was to come. 120 years into the future, he's speaking about it, their deliverance in it. But isn't that a correlation to our Christian life? Being separate from Christ is an exile. Being separate from God is being all in bondage. And God proclaims the year of his favor that he sets humanity free. And that is the Christmas message. Hallelujah. And that's what we see in the book of Isaiah here this morning. We'll see, not only is he talking to a people that will be going off into exile, that just came out of an exile, per se, with a king from Assyria pending on them. And the prophet was saying that they were going to be going off into an exile for 70 years. But then it has a future reference of when John the Baptist prepares the way for the coming of Jesus in Bethlehem. And yet, it has one further reference for us as Christians. When Jesus 
will return to take this church home. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. So there's a whole lot going on in the book of Isaiah here. But yes, we could apply right now and for right here this message. Joey, will you come up and read for us? Please. Isaiah 40, verses 1 through 9. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight and the rough place is smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The voice said, cry out. And he, he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, because the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass, with, the grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. O Zion, you who bring good tidings, get up into the high mountains, O Jerusalem. You who bring good tidings, lift up your voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, behold, you are God. <laughs> May God add his blessing to his holy word. <laughs> Next Sunday is when we celebrate Christmas, but for millions and millions, Christmas will not come. What I mean by that is that December 25th will come, but the true meaning of Christmas will not come for millions. Yes, they'll wake up on December 25th. They may open some presents. They may have a Christmas dinner. But the true meaning of Christmas will not come for millions. And that's a sad thing, is it not? That God sent his son to bring life to humanity that has been walking in darkness. The light of the world that enters into a dark place to show the way to salvation. We find here in the text, in the first verse, it's comfort. Bring comfort to my people, <laughs> says your God. For those that are walking in darkness, those that are walking in despair, those that are walking in hopelessness, there is hope in the one to come. Amen? For there is nothing impossible for the God that we serve. There are many this year that are going through a time of loss. They're going through a time of failure in their health. They're going through a time of despair in relationship. But I'm here to tell you that we serve a God of hope and a God of new beginning and a God of comfort. There are many broken hearts that Jesus came to bind up. He came to mend. And he came to heal. But we must open the door and allow him in. Let every heart prepare him room. Many hold the door shut. That's why I said many will not experience Christmas this year. Because they have a closed door to the Savior. And all that Jesus says that I stand at the door and I knock. And anyone who hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. Is Jesus knocking at your heart this morning? Do you prepare room for him? 
or is the worries of life choking out the Son of God to be born in you? We find in scriptures at times we can be doing things that are even seem to be right, but can be wrong. Do you remember the story of Mary and Martha? We love that around Christmas time because many of us are Marthas. We're running to and fro, doing this and that, but we have not prepared room for Christ. Do you remember the story? It's found in Luke chapter 10 and verses 38 through 41. And Martha opened her house up. Mary and Martha, two sisters, opened their house up for Jesus. And in that culture, they were to tend, make a dinner, and so on. But it was the attitude of Martha that was wrong. It wasn't wrong that she was preparing a dinner for Jesus. Praise the Lord, right? But it was her attitude in it. Her attitude said about her sister, Jesus, can't you tell Mary to get up off the sofa there and help me out? Look at me, I'm weird. <laughs> And Jesus said, Martha, Martha, do you know when you see the reiteration in the scripture, there's some intensity in this. You remember that from growing up, whatever your name be, Robert, Robert. <laughs> okay. It gets your attention, right? And that's what Jesus did for Martha, Martha, Martha. You're worried, encumbered about many things, but there's only one thing is needed. <laughs> Prepare room for me and Martha. I believe she got the hint because later in Scripture we find that out. But how many, so busy with the trees and the tinsel, and the shopping, and the malls, and the food, and the thing that we have no room for Jesus. And we find ourselves short. Anyone get short? I call it, it's supposed to be Christmas rest, but it might be Christmas test, because we're short during Christmas time, when it should be the most joyous time of the year. Peace on earth and goodwill to men.
Prepare ye the way for the Lord. Remove everything that hinders, everything that causes you to stumble. Do you have things in your life today that are cluttered? When you prepare ye room for the Lord. Uh, if you have relatives coming in for Christmas, how many do? We get the house prepared, don't we? We, we get all the clutter out. We don't want to be caught with a dirty home. <laughs> do we? And that's the same way. How do we clean our hearts? Pure hearts and clean hands by trusting Jesus Christ. He's the only one who can cleanse them by the blood of the Lamb. You see, and how many of us, I will answer the question, need to do that? All of us. Every one of us. Every one of us need the cleansing of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what, John the Baptist, that's who this individual is speaking about. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. You know what? He said, keep with the fruit of repentance. Keeping with the fruit of repentance. It is a continuation. Because so many things come into our lives that block out God. Can I get an amen? amen. So many things come in that cause us not to see clearly or hear clearly. And then we're left to our own understanding. God wants us to have the greatest Christmas of all, but we must prepare room for Him. We must move out the clutter. We must throw off everything that hinders and run the race that has been marked out for us with perseverance. The scripture here speaks about make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And in chapter 35, if you're with me in Isaiah, just turn with me for a moment, a couple chapters back. And 35, and look at verse 8. It says here that a highway shall be there, a road. And it shall be called a highway of holiness. Now, you and I both know we're to be ye holy as he is holy. But that's none of our own righteousness. That is his righteousness. He is the one who makes us holy. But he says here in this verse here, there's a highway and it shall be called the highway of holiness. But the unclean shall not pass over. We can't get up, up on this road without the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't walk in the way without being born again. Christmas may not come for millions and millions of people because Christmas has to be do with not only a baby born in the manger, but Christ being born in you. That is Christmas. And when Christ is born in you, then we walk in the way. And the way is the way of holiness. And there is a road. It's a highway. It's above <coughs> other ways. It's not in the earthly realm as all the others walk. We walk with our minds and our hearts on the things that are above. And look at this. Follow me there. I hope you're open to the scriptures. The unclean shall not pass over it. We're made clean by how? By our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Although our sins have been like white crimson, they shall be what? white as snow. Hallelujah. We shall be made clean by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving you the right to get on the highway of holiness. But it shall be for others, whoever walk in that way, Although a fool shall not go astray. Look at verse 9. No lion shall be there. What is the reference we see in Scripture to the lion? 
Satan himself. Satan is described as a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. But if you walk in the way, hallelujah, he can't get up on the road because we're protected by the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. We're guarded by him. He who dwell in the shelter of the Most High rests in the shadow of the Almighty. Because I'm walking in the way of the Lord. I'm preparing the way for the Lord so he can rule and reign where? Right here. Birth in my heart. So that I have peace that transcends all understanding. So he can guard my heart and mind in Christ. So I'm not held captive to the things of this world. That I'm not ensnared to the things of this world. That the devil that roars around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour cannot get at me. Hallelujah. Why? Because I'm walking in the way. I'm preparing for Christ. You know that's an ongoing thing, is it not? It's an everyday thing. Being in the scriptures, in humility, it's the paradox. You want to be exalted? Humble thyself. You see, those who humble themselves are exalted. Those who want to save their life will lose it. Praise the Lord. And when we lose our life, it is saved. What are we losing it for? For Him. What is that describing? That's me getting out of the way. You remember some months back that I wrote a letter to me. Me, I'm done with me. I need me to get out of the way. Me's my big trouble. I don't know about you. Did you ever meet me? <laughs> get up in that head up there. When I get out of the way and I let Christ have full reign, there's peace that transcends all understanding. There's joy that's unspeakable. Hallelujah. And guess what? You know the acronym for joy. Jesus, others, then you. Jesus first, others second, then you. I was watching Charles Stanley this morning and he went some rough spots in his life some years back and he said the greatest thing that blessed him was uh, when he was alone at Christmas time and uh, Christmas morning he would be sitting there and uh, he felt sorry for himself that he was alone but he picked the phone up and he started to just call others and say Merry Christmas, God bless you, I hope you have a happy new year and by giving himself over, dying to himself in a sense. Real joy flooded in. Amen? You know, water goes to the lowest point. When we're a base, God will fill you. It's like, a, you know, less of you, more of him. See, that was what John the Baptist spoke. They came to him and said, are you the Christ? Because are you baptizing? Uh, are you the Elijah? Are you the prophet? And he spoke of this in John 1, and he says, no, not none of those. And he said this, I must become less, and he must become greater. And it's a great paradox we find in Scripture. As we lay down our swords and cease fighting anything, as we give it all over to him, we can really experience the true joy and the true meaning of things because we get out of the way with a little W and get on the right way with a big W. Because in verse 9, no lion will be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go upon it. It shall not be found there. I hope you're following this verse 9. But the redeemed shall work there. Let the redeemed say so. Hallelujah. What does redeemed mean? We've been purchased by the blood of the Lamb. What do we get purchased from? From death to life. The wages that we earn were death. But Jesus brought us back from it. He took our place. He, he redeemed us from death and gave us life. And we have joy in that because that's what Christmas is about. Go back to your text.
text, and we're going to just chapter 40. Other ways of chapter 440, or chapter 40, verse 4, I'm sorry. 440, that's, they don't make a 440 in Isaiah, do they? <laughs> no part used to make a 440. <laughs> And it says here that every valley shall be exalted and every mountain hill shall be brought low and the crooked places shall be made straight, uh, straight and the rough places smooth. And, and of course what he's talking about uh, when a king would come into, into town, they would prepare the roads and they would get them, uh, you know, plowed out and straightened and bring up the valley. But if you look at this in your life with making things that are not so right, make them straight, amen? Prepare them right. You know, each one of us know uh, the things in our lives that need to be straightened out. We all have them, but yet we just shrug them off and we throw them to the side uh, and they're never taken care of another year ago by without dealing with them. But if you make the crooked road straight by yielding it to the Lord, what happens? The rough places become smooth. And what does that mean? Then we can walk in that way. You and I both know that we have some rough paths in our lives. There's some potholes in our lives. There's some things that, that are staggering that make us trip up and uh, that cause us to stumble. And uh, the Bible is telling us that if we walk in that way, that our paths will be smooth, that we will not bend our ankle or trip up in them. And I'm glad that if we follow the way, because the way is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. A lot of us, a lot of us have walked in darkness. A lot of us have gotten up at night and when uh, have to run to the battle, we stumbled over things because this is dark in the room. But when you follow Jesus, when he said that I am the light of the world, that he who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, that's exciting, isn't it? Isn't that exciting? That's, that's for each and every one of us. And, and you know what? We have those who have gone before us who followed that light. Uh, each and, and every one of us have those loved ones that are in glory right now because they walked in the way. Hallelujah. And we're going to see them again because we're going to walk in the way also. And here's something else I have to tell you. Being a Christian and walking in that way is absolutely impossible. Without Christ. <laughs> without the Holy Spirit there's no way there is absolutely no way we can do that without Christ in you which is called the hope of glory hallelujah amen amen, amen. amen. father we thank you we thank you father for the joy of Christmas we thank you for the birth of your son we thank you, Father, for giving us instructions of thy word that might grant us peace. Lord, as we gather here as brothers and sisters, Lord, to rejoice in the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, not only did he come, he is coming again. Hallelujah for that. Father, grant each one here your blessing, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.